Let's build a boat today. Okay, well, not all of it, just the surfaces of the hull. Um, thought it might be nice to put some of my previous videos, fundamental down in the weeds things about to do with curves to, uh, to into practice um, and work on this. So I trolled around a bit, looked for some free boat plans online, came across this guy. Um, it's got some nice images. Uh, and in fact, this turns out to be one that other people um, have used in the past uh, for a common kind of exercise tutorial for building um, boat hulls uh, shapes like this. You know, it's got a nice chine line, nice shear line, uh, and everything else is, is fairly clear from this. So, you know, it's, it's, there's some also some images here for it in the progress. Anyway, let's go back here and start from the very beginning. I have found uh, some of those tutorials, and I think this was a, a Rhino tutorial in, in particular, where some of these curves exist. And so I started with that import, and that import is just a bunch of curves. Now, part of this is a reality check, which is you can see if I look at this first curve down the center line, it's pretty nasty. Um, if I look at the curvature on it, it is indeed not just pretty nasty, very, very nasty. Um, if I look at the curvature comb. So you don't want something like this as a primary curve. Um, the best way, and in fact the way that the tutorial uh, I looked at uh, addresses this, is to create a new curve. Um, so that's what I did here. I just created a new curve, and I approximated a few things, um, changed, tweaked it around a little bit. But just to show you the difference, you know, that's the curvature of the one I created, and that's the curvature of the original um, of the original one. So, you know, I just did that by creating a new sketch. And of course, nowadays I'm coloring everything in primary blue if it, if it is a primary sketch. Um, that's why it's blue. Anyway, I did the same thing for one of the sketches uh, on the top plane, uh, which is actually going to make the shear curve uh, a little in the next step. So essentially, I took you know the four curves that I needed to rebuild, and I just created new um, Bezier sketches from that. Now I'll show you if I just edit one of these. You can see here um, I created a one, two, three, four, five degree Bezier sketch, and then I just tweaked it around uh, until it was pretty close to the original curve. Now the original curve had some dirtiness in it, as you could as you, you know, saw from the beginning there. Um, but this is going to be a perfectly clean. Uh, single span Bezier curve uh, along those lines there. So now that we've got our cleaner curves, we can start the process of some projections. So the first projection is these two sketches to project what is known as the shear curve. It's the sort of the top, uh, top of the boat. The edge. <laughs> Whatever. Um, I'm not a boat builder, but I've just been reading up on it. So I'll try and act like I know what I'm doing. So here's the shear curve. And it looks good. You know, it's just a typical two sketch projection. Uh, pick the two sketches here. And what I have is this. Now, if I look a little bit closer and using one of my favorite custom features, which is the curve evaluator, if I look at that, it tells me something pretty interesting, which is there's 98 control points along here. Now, this is just a function of when you do a two sketch projection. What you're actually doing is it's extruding under the covers this sketch in uh, normal to its plane, and it's intersecting it with the sketch from the uh, the extruded sketch from the other plane. And when you have intersections like this, uh, the math and, and the the curve that's created is quite complicated even for what seem to be pretty simple starting curves. Uh, 98 control points here is a lot of math, and that is just, we'll, we'll bookmark that, right? We'll come back to that in, in a bit. So I do the same thing for what's known as the chine curve. Now, chine curve is kind of where the, I guess you could explain, you could describe it as the, the bow wave breaker, <laughs> or whatever. Um, it's a line that goes down the hull like this, and it forms, you know, pretty much divides the sides from the bottom, if, if that would be one way to do it. 
I've done it the same way. You know, I, I created this this nice clean sketch and this nice clean sketch over here, and I did a two point a two curve projection uh, and got that. Now. The first, the next thing to do was to create some surfaces. So I used the boundary surface um, technique, and I just used these two curves in the U direction. I didn't do anything in the V direction. I just let that happen naturally. Um, you'll notice an interesting technique that's been used here is to overbuild, all right, overbuild past the center line. And I'm going to flip this around so that you can see where that center plane is there. I've actually overbuilt well past it. I'm going to do some trimming later on. Um, it's a common technique and, and sometimes can be a good one. So we've got a boundary surface. And then, you know, there's a few extra things like this. Let's do the center line and create another boundary surface. And you can see, again, it's overbuilding quite a lot. All right. It doesn't matter that this isn't planar, it is not joining up. We just actually, uh, we're going to trim that back, in fact, in the next step. So if I do a split here, I'm splitting almost, but not quite, on that center plane. Um, I want to leave a little bit of extra space so that we can create what, we remember if you had a look at this thing, hmm, yeah, where's a good picture of it? Uh, there's sort of a flat line down the middle there that we're trying to create this uh, flat surface down the middle. So we're just going to give it a little bit of space uh, before we do the trim or the split here. And um, there's that. Now we also need to do the trans transom. So we're going to split that using a plane. So, so far so good. You know, we've got two surfaces. Uh, they're in the right position. Let's mirror that. All right. So now we've got identical and it's starting to look pretty good. It's starting to look pretty good. Um, the next thing I'll do is create a, a curve that goes across the back here, across the back of the trans. And I'm going to fill in now these gaps here. There's the one at the front and the one underneath where the, sort of the keel line is. I'm going to use boundary surfaces again for that because it's really easy. I could have used loft. Um, I could have used a fill if I really wanted to, but I am particularly fond of a boundary surface. Uh, so let's use that there across the bottom. And the one on the front is also a boundary surface between two curves only. The U, the V profiles take care of themselves. This back transom, I'm going to use a fill. Now we've actually got something that is watertight, uh, pun intended, because it is a boat. Uh, the next thing, and if I just sort of refer back to this image here, you can see there's a little bit of a covered section uh, at the front. This uh, it's a pretty small image. Let's go to it. Yeah, there's, a, there's a covered section, and we're going to put a, put a little bit of a curve over the front there and, and cover it in. So the way that I'm going to do that is take some of these reference curves, and remember these the reference curves when we imported these. Uh, there's a whole bunch of things like, oh, there it is there. That, that's the reference curve. I'm just projecting that out onto this face using a, a projected curve, um, you know, curve to face feature. I picked that original imported edge, and I'm going in the direction of the front plane, which is this big one here. And its target is that face over there. So I've got these little curves here that I'm going to use in order to control the direction and position of a sketch, um, and that sketch being that thing there. All right, so that sketch could be a primary sketch. So let's color it blue. That's how we do that. We just right click, set the appearance on the sketch, and now it's a nice blue. So it helps differentiate from the rest of the curves and things um, in here. Last feature. And we're nearly done, is to create a boundary surface between these four sides here. The one, two, and then the side three, four. So that looks pretty good. And if I clean it all up with a Shift-P uh, keyboard shortcut, uh, we have something that looks pretty clean. right? But let's have a look a little closer. If we look at the curvature of this side face, you see there's a lot of control points along here. And the same thing on that 
surface that we created underneath. There's a lot of control points. That, this looks like a pretty simple surface. Why do we have so much math in it? Um, and it all comes back to that bookmark that I said that we would come back to, which is how we created this primary curve along the side here using the two curve, uh, two sketch projection. And we couldn't avoid that because the, the, the output of this was that complicated, uh, if I have a look at it again, um, where is it? It is the one called shear. Right? If we look at the control points again, remember there was 98 of them and there was just lots of them. So because there is so much math, so many control points in that curve, which is the boundary of the boundary surface, um, that influences the boundary surface very much. So what can we do? Well, we can try it again with some of the new tools that I had been presenting or for, I'd made for myself in, in the past. So the first thing to do is instead of doing a two sketch projection from up here, I've got my alternate version, um, which is all the way down in my list. And the easiest way for me to get it is with the S key for the shortcut toolbar. And I've got this approximate projection shortcut ready to go. So this does the same thing. You pick the two sketches, but and it creates the projection. But in, instead, I'm going to use an approximation, um, you know, and this is going to allow me to really smooth this thing out a lot. So that curve that we created there, that reapproximated curve. Let's have a look at what's going on mathematically with it. And in fact, magically or on purpose, it has created a single span degree five curve because I asked it to in this feature. I said, give me a degree five curve, give a really loose approximation, but sampling through the original curve you know, that it was projected and it's going to give me this really nice thing. So if we have a look at the control points on that, nice, really nice. That is what we would like to use as a primary curve. Now, of course, I did the same thing. Um, uh, let me get rid of that. I did the same thing for the the what do you call it? the chine curve right the chine curve as well i use the same technique to create a clean curve here uh, where is it there and then use those two really clean curves to start creating my boundary surfaces now we'll come back to something that you probably just sort of i glanced over there look at the control points now or the control point grid for the surface that we just created in fact for those that are keeping count and doing the math in their head, um, this is a single span in both directions. So it is a, a five, a degree five by degree three Bezier patch. Um, now, I said this in the last video, but for a lot of people and for a lot of use cases, this doesn't matter, right? But in some cases, having control over the where the why and the how many of these control points is of the extreme importance. And I guess the whole point of this is that it is possible. I'm showing you how I made it possible uh, in Onshape today using some pretty simple uh, custom features that I put in there. Now let's wind back the clock because that is that well, that's the whole point I really wanted to show today. And in fact, you know, I did the same thing with the bottom of the boundary uh, of this, this is the bottom of the boat uh, boundary surface if we do the split in the mirror again uh, and have a look at the uh, the surface that we created under there it's similarly beautifully created uh, single span um, it's a bezier patch in there so both of those are as as uh, efficient as we could possibly make them there now one other if we so now now i can wind back uh, remember, we created this this curve at the top, uh, which was the going to be the shear curve. One of the things that I did introduce last time was the ability to to have this curve tweaker. Now, the curve tweaker is a little feature that I created here, where I can select a Bezier curve like this, 
and from any given control point perform some tweaking. Now, not really designed for gross uh, gross changes like that. I've designed this really to do a little bit of uh, massaging of the curve. You know, we can move it in this plane using that 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 selector of the manipulator there, or that that part of the manipulator there, just opening it out a little bit. Um, now, it is not exactly the projection from that we had originally, but that's that's not what I intend. I actually intend to tweak this up uh, and make give it a little bit more shape. Uh, than perhaps uh, that was created before. So that's the curve tweaker. And in fact, I had used it in here. And you can see the, uh, the before and after. So that's the before and that's the after. All right. And I used that tweaked after curve <laughs> to create the boundary surface. All right. So that's how, uh, that's how that looks there. And if I just roll down to the split, um, that's a little bit nicer. Now, the really nice thing of this is that I can edit this with the final button selected. So it will regenerate all the rest of those features up to the point of the, the rollback bar, but still allow me to make additional tweaks and see what the effect is on that final surface. You can see how the surface is moving with the, the tweaker. So if I do want to provide a little bit of an extra height uh, to this, or maybe I want to go to the top view and give it a little wall. I've actually already inflated it quite a bit. So let's bring it back in. So I'm moving it in a single plane. I could go to that the front view here and find that this one might need to uh, you know, come in a bit like that. And you can see the effect it's having on not just the curve, but having effect on the surface itself. Um, my feature will also reset that curve um, or that position of the control point back to where it started uh, in case you mess everything up and, uh, and need, to, need to reset things. So we have created a clean curve. We have tweaked it. Then we have used that to create the boundary surface um, uh, which is going to be that very, very nice clean thing. So let's just roll to the end. Uh, I think we've come to the end of this. And I clean it up with a shift P, hide all the curves and sketches. And we you know we have something that looks pretty similar to before, although we have given this a little bit of extra flare uh, around the sides and maybe a little bit of extra flare over the, uh, over the shape there, modernized it a little bit. After all, this was a pretty old, uh, old design. Uh, we're sort of bringing it into the 21st century here. Um, that is pretty much what I wanted to uh, to show today. I mean, from here on, we've got the the really clean surfaces that we can use for you know the basis of the rest of the the, the structural design. Um, with such clean surfaces, the benefit being, of course, that offsetting, trimming, booleans operations are. Uh, going to be as robust as they possibly can be uh, because you're not dealing with those huge clumps of, of control points in, in strange locations. Uh, once again, it might not be for everybody. It probably isn't for everybody. But if you do want surfaces with very highly controlled control point grids like this, um, then, then this is one way you can do it.